We heard it was the finest uh, medieval castle in, in uh, England, and we were very much impressed. We really had a good time. We spent the full day and uh, just took it all in. Really enjoyed it. Just one of many satisfied visitors at Warwick Castle. The castle is a centerpiece of the delightful, largely unspoilt town of Warwick, one of the best preserved in England. Warwick Castle was founded around 1068 by the conquering Normans, although nothing remains of the wooden battlements they built. Today's castle dates from the 13th and 14th centuries, and for hundreds of years it was home to the mighty Earls of Warwick, who played such key roles in the Wars of the Roses and the Hundred Years' War. The infamous Richard III once owned the castle, and it was later a stronghold during the English Civil War. Stuart Rogers knows the castle well, and our visit began with a descent down damp and well-worn stairs. Well, we're down in the dungeon, and you can hear the sound echoing around this horrible, vaulted stone room. What, in fact, was a dungeon used for? Well, mainly to house prisoners from wars, and in particular, um, we had a number of prisoners here where you can see, in fact, uh, they had scored into the walls their initials and the dates. It is drained only by this narrow gully here in the floor, ventilated by one small shaft which is up there, you see. And, and of course, whilst we have a certain amount of lighting in here, there was hardly any lighting at all except from the small opening at the back, which of course now is a small window. Uh, that would be the only uh, lighting you would get into here. And they will keep the prisoners in here for many, many years. As you can imagine, it was a great relief to rise above ground again. Warwick Castle is now owned by the Madame Tussauds group, and the extensive use of high-quality wax figures throughout the displays brings the history to life. This technique is used to its most dramatic effect in the display called Kingmaker, which brings medieval England to life in sound and theatre. The year is 1471, and the castle is preparing for war. The horses, too, are being prepared for battle. The farrier's shop is a hive of activity. Well, you can see the smoke atmosphere of the farrier striking his anvil. The red-hot horseshoe down below being um, hardened in the water butt. So these are all part of the preparations for battle? Oh, yes, yeah. The horses must be properly shod. Yes, and here again, the preparation of a certain amount of the armour, as you can see, on the right. And then as we walk into here, we have the, the cart and the other preparations being made for the forces, the soldiers with their bows and arrows, and a stock of arrows over on the right-hand side here. Uh, in, while they're preparing all the equipment ready to take into battle. And as you move from room to room, you'll see lifelike displays that depict the preparations for the 15th century version of Total War. But wars not only make heroes and victories, they also leave the broken, the defeated, or simply the old soldiers too tired to fight anymore. The curiously named Lord Leicester Hospital is home to some of them. I asked Master of the Hospital, Captain Dermot Rhodes, Royal Navy, if the word hospital meant the same 400 years ago as it does now. No, it didn't, and it's a great uh, problem to me now because it has no medical connotation at all. We do not make people well. Um, there are no medical staff here, but unfortunately people, when they see the sign hospital, think it's just that. Hospitality is provided here, and it's the old-fashioned meaning of the word a hospice or to provide a home. Since 1571, it's been a home for ex-servicemen who live here, and they live here under the ancient rules, which still apply. They live here rent-free, rate-free, and they have their heating paid. In return, they help me maintain and run the hospital as a tourist attraction. We still abide by some of the old rules, the brethren are not allowed to keep hawks or dogs. Uh, Robert Dudley laid down that they were not allowed to entertain ladies under the age of 70 in their rooms. Well, of course, I don't inquire how old their, their guests are these days. 
The buildings themselves at the hospital have been preserved to an exceptionally high standard. Enter the Great Hall to see where King James I came to eat a dinner which took the townspeople ten years to pay for. Then walk out into the secluded courtyard. Part original 14th century, part Victorian over-enthusiastic restoration, as Dermot Rhodes explains. The courtyard and indeed the entrance to the courtyard are um, plastered with um, mottos and homilies um, which exhort the residents, the brethren here, or indeed any other visitor, to, uh, I think, live a good life, uh, fear God, honour the, love the brotherhood, honour all men. That appears in the corner of the courtyard. There's a funny story about that in that um, it's a favourite place, this, for uh, brides to come and be photographed after their wedding. But I had a very irate bride who had received her wedding photographs who'd been taken in that corner. And on the top of each wedding photograph was honour all men. <laughs> she didn't think that was a very good way of starting married life. The Lord Leicester Hospital that isn't a hospital. Don't miss it. Warwick also has many antique shops and lovely walks along the River Avon or by the canal. There are golf courses in the area and a horse race course right in the center of town. It has three excellent museums, including Oaken's Dolls Museum, one of the best in the world, and the Market Hall Museum with fossils of giant sea creatures over 350 million years old. Well, set against that timescale, recent history like the 12th century doesn't seem quite so old. However, you must not miss St. Mary's Church, founded 800 years ago. Of particular interest is the Chantry Chapel, built for the tomb of Richard Beecham, Earl of Warwick, in the 15th century. This earl was perhaps best known in history as the jailer, accuser, and executioner of Joan of Arc. I know you like Warwick. It's friendly, unspoiled, and the parking is relatively easy. Have a good day. And remember to turn on the tape again as you drive to your next location, Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury.